Hey folks, welcome to New Master That Riff Lesson. I'm going to show you how to play Ship of Fools uh, by Robert Plant from his Now and Zen album, uh, which features Mr. Doug Boyle on guitar. So uh, I'm in standard tuning for this. This is basically a two bar riff, it's repeated four times. But I want to talk about uh, the kind of tone I'm going for here. Um, it's a real crystalline uh, kind of tone that uh, Doug Boyle's got in this song. Uh, at that time, Live, he was playing a lot of, you know, he was playing Ibanez guitars and live, I think he maybe used Fender amps. But I was trying to find out information on how, you know, the tone that he got for the, this recording. To me, it sounds as if it might actually kind of be DI'd. So I've set up a Helix patch that's kind of got a DI'd kind of tone. But pickup wise, what I'm aiming for here is one of these out of position kind of settings. I picked my sword to do this. Because I've got my humbucker, humbucker and two single coils here. And what I'm going for is basically in between sound between the neck and the middle pickup here. So it's a bit more of a kind of, um, you know, one of those kind of thinner sounds, those kind of, out of, out of kind of position sounds that you get in the Strat and stuff. You might get something similar as well, like the bridge in the middle. But I felt that it sounded a little bit more you know, closer with this kind of setting here. Uh, I've also got a little bit of flanger on there, a bit of reverb as well, just to kind of <clears throat> 80s it up a little bit. So, it's a two bar uh, riff idea, little hook. Uh, all played with finger style, so no pick. I'm gonna use right hand fingers for this. And the first little phrase sounds like this. Okay. So rhythmically, the thing to watch out for here is you're coming in on the second 16th of the bar here to begin with. So you think of uh, counting it, you know, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, you're kind of coming in what E. Like that, so it's and what I'm going to be playing here is I'm playing 12th fret of the G string with my middle finger. And I pluck that with my thumb. Then I'm going to play open high E string. Then my third finger is playing 12th fret of the B. I kind of play that with uh, the middle then the index finger. And then my thumb plays the G string again. Now, one of the important things about this whole kind of riff is the dynamics in this. This is why it sounds as awesome as it does. Doug Burrow is using these fingers here to control which notes are going to pop out and which notes are going to be quiet. So when you're playing that, aim for the 12th fret and the G string the second time you play it just to pop out a little bit more. You can you maybe add a little bit of vibrato? Then we take that down. I'm going to play 11th fret of the G string now with the middle finger. Open E string again. First finger now plays a 10th fret of the B string and then 11th fret of that G string again. So again, finger wise, I kind of do right hand, thumb, middle, index, thumb. Okay. The, again, the last note is the one you want to pop out. So you can play those ones before it much quieter. So it kind of has that dynamic kind of shift range to it. So together that sounds like this. Okay. Next little phrase is going to be that. Now again, rhythmically, this comes in on the E of your one E under in the next bar. So you kind of go one and then kind of play your phrase. So what I'm going to play here is I'm going to do a pull off eight to seven in the B string, second to first. My first finger's batting though the B and the G strings there at that seventh fret. So I can play seven fret of the G there. Then I'm going to do nine in the D string, pull off to seven on that D string. Now dynamically here, that first note pops out and then it kind of gets quieter as you go down the arpeggio to the point that that last note later on when you do the repeat almost as if it isn't there so that kind of goes yeah then we're going to jump up play this okay so what I'm going to do is jump up and play 12th fret the high E string okay not too loud with that kind of soft then the next time we play it pick it a little bit harder I'm going to pick it Pull off to 10th fret there, so it's 12, 10. Then I'm going to do the same thing, pull off but 13 to 10 in the B string. And then play 13 at the end there. Again, a little bit softer than the other notes. So that kind of goes like this. Yeah. So that bar slowly goes. Okay. If I put the two bars together, the first two bars sound like this. Okay. 
Okay, so we basically repeat those bars another three times, but the little starting points rhythmically different. So where we first started the song like this, you know, same picking pattern. Now we're going to do something since like this. So what I'm doing is I'm starting now on the 12th fret of the B string. Use my index finger for that. Then I'm going to play 12th fret of the G, then the open E string, and then back to 12th fret of the B string. And that's the note that pops out. So it kind of slowly goes like this. Yeah. Again, you can put a little bit of vibrato on there. Then you do this little shape, just as we did with four. Again, 11th fret, last note, and it pops out a little bit. And then everything else is pretty much the same. Yeah. The only difference is you've got these little dynamic variations. So sometimes you'll have, as I said, this pull off. And it's almost that like you can hardly hear that note at the end there. And this is one of the great things about this, because you're using your fingers to play this, you can control the dynamics of this maybe a lot more than you could maybe just using the pick. Okay, so that's it. That's the Ship of Fools riff. Um, it's quite a short little two bar thing, but the, 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 the kind of tricky thing with this is just working on that dynamics, particularly if you don't normally play finger style. So this is a great little riff for working on that, where you might be, you know, certain fingers might be Hit the string, the strings uh, harder, so you get the note popping out a bit more. Rather than just being all this homogenous kind of same dynamic kind of range. So that's one of the great things about using your fingers for this. So there you go, guys. As I said, the Helix patch is available for this. If you want to, if you've got a Helix and you want to try and get that kind of Dubois crystalline kind of tone, uh, that's available to uh, patrons over at the Patreon page. As is um, a sound slice version of the transcription of this and guitar profile as well, of course. You can also get extra lesson materials and of course I've got the whole back catalogue of stuff on there as well if you want to check it out. You can also uh, follow Master the Guitar on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Uh, some things up there that you won't see on YouTube. And of course if you want to stay up to date, uh, if you're first time visiting the channel, if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button and of course hit the notification bell as well. So that way you're always kept up to date with any uploads that I do. So have fun with that guys. Classic bit of 80s Robert Plant. Uh, songage and a good bit of uh, fingerstyle dynamic playing it on there as well so have fun with it